thanks so much for joining us on our Arise Church YouTube channel. We exist so that you can experience God and we hope you do experience his presence and his power through this message. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to us on Instagram at My Arise Church and find us on YouTube at the same handle, My Arise Church. For those who may know me, maybe we haven't had the chance to meet. I love riddles. I love wordplay. I love puns. I'm a good fan of puns. I love dad jokes. Come on, somebody, where my dad's at. Listen, there's just something about dad jokes. When you have that first kid, I think the Holy Spirit just like downloads dad jokes into you. So Pastor Johnny, be ready. That moment is coming, and it's going to be so good. But I love playing with words. I love working with words and making jokes with words and that sort of thing. And that's why I'm giving you words this morning. That's all I got to give you. And so... But, you know, if you think about it, like the English language is kind of weird because how we use words, um, often what words we communicate doesn't make sense for what we're saying. So I just show my age a little bit because I am not, I'm not like old, but I'm not like young. I'm like, all right, I'm middle aged, but I just, it's a moment of confession, authenticity. I'm just being real with you. Uh, you know, so like when I say a word like, man, that's cool. Here's the thing, I could mean uh, I really like those shoes, I could mean I think that's great, I could mean uh, that's an awesome opportunity. What I don't mean is that is cold to the touch. Like that's not what cool means. Cool is in our vernacular, you know what I'm saying? So we have words that just don't make sense, which is why I've heard people say, I know that English will be the language of heaven because it takes an eternity to learn. <laughs> and so... If you have been around for a few minutes, or maybe you've heard of this before, you've heard of an oxymoron. Anybody ever heard of an oxymoron? Okay, an oxymoron is a self-contradictory grouping of words. It's a grouping of words that when you put them together, they make no sense. The words independently may make sense, but when you lump them together into one phrase and you offer it to the world, it makes no sense. For instance, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Can I just tell you, the one time I was in Philly... And tried to hug a guy. He did not love me. I tried to hug him. He tried to mug me. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Jeremy, I'm sorry. I know you're around here somewhere. I know you love Philly. So we love you too. But like there's other things that just, it, it, you put them in the same sentence. Like, okay, it would be like a pit bull named Princess that wears a tutu. Like it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Or, or even this phrase, it doesn't make sense. It's civil war. You think about it, anybody who's like a history buff knows that it was hand-to-hand, -hand, bloody combat. If anything, it wasn't civil. There was nothing civil about it. But you put it together, it's an oxymoron. Or how about this, good grief. Nobody has ever had grief and went, yeah, that was great. I'd like to do that again. <laughs> no, it's not good. That's why they call it grief. Why in the world do we put this together? Or how about icy hot? Icy hot, this is how old I am. As Shaquille O'Neal is doing icy hot commercials, right? <laughs> like, that's how old I am. It's just icy hot. It doesn't make sense when you put them together. Or you put together like jumbo shrimp. Or you put together minor miracle. How about this? Christian atheist. I, I, it's, it's a thing. Like it's weird. It just, but it makes no sense. How about this? Working vacation. Working vacation. I will never get this one. Okay. So my wife and I, we went on a cruise a couple weeks ago. We took some vacation. We went on a cruise. Our kids came with us. The, immediately, the first thing that we learned about cruises, because we'd never done it before, what we learned about cruises is never take your kids on a cruise. And so, <laughs> so working vacation. And so, but I saw people there were on a cruise boat in the Bahamas, and they're like on their computer. And I'm like, just stop working for a minute, but they can't. It's a working vacation. I'll never understand that. Where are my children of the 80s at? Okay, how about this? Back to the future. Like it's the future, but somehow back. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This one, this one, again, just talking oxymorons. We're going somewhere with this. I promise, just hang in there. All those in the, up in the balcony, just lean into this. Those watching online, it's okay. We're going somewhere with this. How about this? All right, you, you, how about this? a good cat? There's no such thing. There's just no such thing. They're evil. They're demonic. They're not of God. They're not. They're not. They were created after the fall. Okay, that's just that's the way it happens. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Listen, you have to forgive me. We're in church. That's what we do. 
How about this? This will, this, these, these words make no sense when you put them together in a sentence. Chicago Bears win the Super Bowl. Never happened. Never happened. Never. Hey, listen, listen, take it up with Jesus, okay? I didn't pre- it was predestined, okay? I don't, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't work. All right, so let me just give you this. We talk about oxymorons. Pastor Pete, where are you going with this? I'm so glad you asked right back there. Thank you so much. Uh, where are you going with this? Okay, here's what I'm trying to say. Here's an oxymoron, and I've come here today to give you a gift, and that gift is this. I'm absolutely going to ruin a Christmas carol for you, okay? Because here's the oxymoron. Silent night. Silent night. Okay, just in my best Chandler Bing, let me just say, could there be a worse title for a Christmas song? <laughs> because if, if that night that Jesus was born was anything, it was not silent. Oh, it was a holy night. It was a humble night. It was a sacred night. It was a simple night. The last thing it was, was a silent night. And so over the next few minutes, as I ruin this Christmas carol for you, I want to give you kind of the big idea of where we're going with this, is that since Jesus' birth wasn't silent, I won't be silent about his birth. Since Jesus' birth wasn't silent, I won't be I, I, I won't be silent about his birth. And so that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. But the reality is this, is that before the night that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the manger, the story we're loving, we're celebrating right now at this time of year, it had been silent. It had been silent for 400 years. There had not been a message from God. There had not been a prophet, one who speaks for God, who gave a message from God. There had not been any active activity vocally from the Lord to his people for 400 years. From Malachi to Matthew, not a peep. And I would imagine that at Christmas time, if we're being honest with one another, we sometimes feel like we're in that same boat where it's been so long since we've heard from God that we believe and we bought into the lie that God is being silent with us. And as a response to that, what we've done is we've become silent with God. And I'm going to push you into a place today where if you feel like that's your reality, where you're like the people of Israel who have not heard from God for 400 years, it's been so long from the word of God to the fulfillment of God's word, can I just encourage you, don't be silent with your prayer. Don't be silent with your praise. God is here. God is here. So I want to convince you of that. If you go to Luke chapter 2, if you have your copy of the scriptures, paper, digital, however you interact with God's word, go to Luke chapter 2. 400 years. That'd be like Shakespeare to now. Like that's a long stinking time. And so it had been quiet until this moment in Luke chapter 2. And you know this text so well. The word of the Lord says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause Great joy for all the people. Today, in, this, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. In verse 12, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Over the next few minutes, silent night will turn into a victorious night. It will turn into a loud night. It will turn into a praise break night. I mean, somebody, come on, got to get a praise break. Get ready for this because God is... I really believe that the silence that you feel like you have experienced from the Spirit of God is going to be broken and you're going to experience God's peace like never before. But to get to that place, and we're going to be there in a minute, just hold on. We're going to be there in a minute. But here's the thing, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be silent. I'm not going to be silent because God's presence brings peace. I'm not going to be silent because the presence of the Lord brings peace to my life. In fact, I've noticed this, and you've probably seen this at work too, in your life, that the times you're more often stressed and frustrated with the things of this world, and you can't seem to figure out an answer, or you're hitting a ceiling in your relationship with Jesus, it's because there has been distance placed between you and God's presence. And when we come back into the presence of the Lord and we fix our eyes on Jesus, the beginner and the finisher, as the scriptures say, the author and the end of our faith is Jesus, we begin to receive the peace of God that passes all understanding. In fact, God's peace will pass our understanding that even when we're mourning, 
even when we're hurting, even when we're sick in our body, even when the bank account is empty, no matter what the life circumstance is, where the world would say, you should have no peace about this, we can step in as people of God and say, I have absolute peace about this because Jesus is my peace. All right, so Christmas story, right? We're, we're familiar with this. We've heard Linus tell this to Charlie Brown for Christmases long, long past now. And so these angels show up, and you're like, man, what in the world is an angel? An angel is a created being by God. They often serve throughout the scriptures as messengers. They would bring a, a message direct from God. Oftentimes they would even show up as a warrior in human form. Sometimes they would show up as a messenger in human form and, and all kinds of things. And we could spend all day talking about angels, and there's all kinds of cool studies out there and it's wild and 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 you think like why would they be afraid I mean this is the the, this is the the radiant glory of God like why would they be afraid because man throughout all the scriptures angels often would step in and do things crazy like there's a story in the Old Testament where one angel showed up and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers like ah so if an angel shows up to you and a couple of buddies in the middle of the night it might be a moment for fear It might be a moment for fear. And I love the fact that the angel says, do not be afraid. And all throughout the Christmas story, just read it on your own time and just make notes of this in your own Bible study. How many times an angel shows up in the middle of the story and the very first word spoken is, be not afraid. Don't be fearful. I know you may have been fearful because this moment could be scary, but I didn't come to bring a sword. I came to bring a good news of peace that will be for all people. And so the angel shows up, and they get fearful. Fear not. Now, there is no fear in the presence of the Lord. Fear in this sense. If you are in relationship with God, you do not need to fear being in the presence of God. Because God's presence gives us peace. And it's hard to be silent about that. It's hard when you know, as you look through your life, as you have that 2020 view of your past, and you see all the places where God has saved you and set you free and healed and provided for you and all this. It's hard to be quiet about those things. I mean, we can't help but talk about the greatness of God because it is by the grace of God I'm saved. It's by God's grace I'm sucking air right now. It's by God's grace I'm able to move around right now. It's only by his grace. I can't help but talk about how good my God is. Now, here's here's the thing. I'm just going to make some observations of the text because I think this is interesting. I think when we read this text, we often see this and we see the angels show up and we see this radiant glory and we we tend to think that's the the brightness of the angel. But I'm going to submit to you that that wasn't the brightness of an angelic being. That was the very glory of God. As you look at the scripture, it says that the glory of the Lord shone around them. It was God's own glory that was there on that hillside as these shepherds are watching their sheep. It was the very presence of God. It was a moment where the supernatural met the natural and God communicated a message where it had been silent for so long. But in that period of silence, it was only because God was working out an incredible story for my salvation and for our good. It was the very glory of God in that moment. And so fear, fear transformed into peace. And I just imagine there's got to be somebody here even watching online where the, the fear of this world has weighed you down to the point where you can't even enjoy Christmas. And I'm telling you today that the peace of God that passes all understanding is available to you right now in this place. Even before an altar response, you can experience that right there in your seat when you turn your eyes on Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. You will experience God's peace. 900 years before Bethlehem, as we're talking about the prophets, those who speak for God, here we have Bethlehem, 900 years before, there's a prophet who speaks a word from God, and it had a, it had a momentary fulfillment, this prophetic word, but it also had a future fulfillment in Christ. In Isaiah chapter 9, here's what we see in the word of the Lord. It says this, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of peace. Here's how you know the presence of God is near, is when there is a peace that you can't explain, because the world can't give it, and the world can't take it away. And so in this, Isaiah, in the temporary fulfillment of God stepping in to redeem his people, is also saying there's going to be a future fulfillment in 900 years in Bethlehem, in this stone manger where they're going to wrap Jesus up in cloth and lay him in there, that his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here's what you're looking at right now. You are looking at the resume of Jesus. 
And, and see, Jesus isn't just like 10% each of these. He is 100% all of these. He is 100% wonderful. He is 100% wonderful counselor. Maybe you need wisdom from God this Christmas. That's available to you. Maybe you, you, you need to recognize 100% mighty God. Jesus cannot not be God. He is the mighty God. He is our everlasting father and the prince of peace. And the peace of God is available. He is your counselor. He is your friend. He is your giver of peace. And that's why the angel showed up and said, hey, listen, don't be afraid. I bring you good news. Oh, come on, somebody. Who needs some good news today? Man, you never see that. You never like turn on the TV and they say, hey, listen, we got nothing but good things to tell you. No, you, you, you turn on the TV and it's like this thing is blowing up and this is running out of oil and all kinds of things. Why? Because the news plays on fear. Now, I get they're reporting what's happening in the world because we are in this world, but we are not of this world, but we're not out of this world. So I get there's going to be bad news in this world, but the angel did not show up with a sword of destruction. The angel showed up with a message of peace from God. Now, often on the news, they're going to show stories of golden retrievers that can, like, hit a basketball into a hoop, and those are nice. But that's not good news. That's a, that's a momentary feel, like, aw, cool. They'll never show a cat story, by, just so you know. They're never... You never hear about a cat saving, like, a drowning anybody. You never hear that. Just cats, cats don't care. They're evil. All right, where were we? Oh, yeah, see, here's the deal, because Christmas... Man, there's something about Christmas that Christmas brings about, whether we'll say it out loud, whether we'll confess it to a friend, Christmas sometimes can bring out some pretty raw emotions. Maybe in the car when nobody's looking. Maybe when you're at home by yourself and you realize this Christmas, there's something about Christmas and you realize it's going to be your first Christmas alone because the one you loved who you shared Christmas with, they're, they're not here anymore. Might be, parent, there's a painful place in your heart because this is the first Christmas where that child is gone and they're not coming back. Whether through just being busy and growing up and leaving the nest or because they've walked away from the Lord entirely. Christmas has a way of bringing out this emotional pain and frustration. Can I just encourage you, the Prince of Peace is with you in that moment. Amen. And he is there to be your friend that stays closer than a brother. And you can call out on your Prince of Peace. And so, what fears are stealing your peace? What fears are stealing your peace? I'm going to ask in a few moments that the Holy Spirit would show you in your heart, even as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit will show you those fears in your life that are stealing the peace that you need right now, in this life, in this moment, in this experience, that the Holy Spirit will show you that. And then the Lord will step in and show himself strong, and sovereign in each and every one of those areas in your life. I believe he's going to do it. I believe there's somebody, there's going to be testimonies that come out today. If Jesus delays his return, and even so we say, come Lord Jesus. If Jesus delays his return for any length of time, here's what I believe. Is that today, God is going to set somebody free from fear that has held you captive. Because the enemy wants to trick you into a place of silence. You cannot let the enemy win there. You must let out your praise. You must call on the Lord in prayer. You must open God's word. Don't let the enemy shame you. Oh, he's tricky, right? Don't let the enemy shame you that you can't because of whatever wrongdoing you've done. Jesus has paid for that on the cross. Let me just remind you. But whatever wrongdoing that might be, don't let the enemy beat you over the head with that. You go to the Lord humbly and honestly, and you lay that down at the feet of Jesus, and you allow the Prince of Peace to step in in that moment. Don't hold back. Don't stop your praise. Don't stop your prayer. Let it out. God's presence brings peace. So I won't be silent because Jesus is the sign I'm looking for. I, I won't be silent about Christmas. I won't be silent about the birth of Jesus because Jesus is the sign I'm looking for. Take a little bit of a, a closer like, look here at Luke chapter 2, verse 12. The angel says this, this will be a sign to you, a simeon in Greek. This will be a simeon to you, a, a symbol, an image, a picture for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Now, listen. Often what happens is, is that we're asking God for a sign. And usually when we think of signs, we're thinking of what? Like, show me a thing. Show me an object. Show me a moment that I can interpret as a sign that you're listening to me, that you're with me, that you care about me, all these other things. But I, I just want to tell you, as lovingly as I possibly can, that the Lord has given you a sign, and Jesus is that sign that you're looking for. 
Jesus is that sign you're looking for because the angel said, the sign to you is not a what, the sign to you is a who. Okay, let me just, the sign that you're looking for is not a what, it is not an object. The sign you're looking for is a who, and that who is Jesus. Um, Let me just speak to the formerly young people. So just give me a moment. (laughs) Traveling at Christmas can be stressful. There's a lot of stressors at Christmas, right? And traveling at Christmas can be stressful. But you may not have any idea what it was like before we had turn-by-turn navigation on our phone. Like there was a time in history where you would set out to a destination over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. But what you don't know is that along the way, there's construction zones, accidents, and speed traps waiting to slow you down. But you didn't know they were there until you came up on it. You just had to get in the car and drive and hope that traffic would be clear. Now, at least with GPS, it's a beautiful thing. It's like, you know, there's an eight-minute slowdown on I-4. Take this exit and go this way, and it just, you get rerouted. But before that, you just had no clue. So years ago, before GPS, this is how old I am. Years ago, before GPS, uh, I had a little map, and this church invited me to come speak. I was like, sweet. So I get in the car. I'm with my buddy Rob, and we're driving. And uh, when I had called the church earlier to set the appointment, they said, turn left at the Hardee's. Anybody remember Hardee's? Uh, Hardee's was a thing, right? So they said, turn left at the Hardee's, and the church is, is like right down that street. And I thought, okay, that seems easy enough. We'll look for a Hardee's. We'll turn left. Well, I didn't know that the Hardee's burned down the week before. So we get to this town, and we're just driving around because we're, come on, we're guys. We're way too proud to stop and at, ask for direct. Like, that's the way it was, right? See, guys don't have to deal with that anymore. We got the GPS tell us to turn left, and we just do what it, yeah, we do what it says. Okay, we don't have to be proud anymore. And so we're just driving around, and for two hours, we're looking for a church that we were convinced didn't exist because the Hardee's burned down. We didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't have the sign to give us a direction. See, let me talk to you about signs and signals for just a moment because I feel like there's so many people that are in this place, even online right now, you're in this place where you're asking for a sign or some kind of signal from God. There is a big difference between a sign and a signal. Okay, so like a sign, I think we get it as we're driving down the road, as we're going to, you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house, we go, we need the signs that will give us the information we need to get to our destination. A sign will tell us how many miles from Tampa we are. A sign will tell us what kind of uh, roadside attractions are there. One of the funniest things, I grew up in the Midwest, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just gonna, like, make fun of the Midwest. Anybody Midwest people? Awesome. <laughs> This is the best thing. Next time you're driving through the Midwest, look for the road signs that say attractions and there's nothing on the sign. (laughs) It's just like, there's nothing to see here. Keep going. Just keep going. I don't remember where I was going with that. Oh yeah, so signs. Signs have information. Okay, so signs give you the information you need to get to where you're going. It tells you how many miles away it is. It tells you what kind of detour is coming up. Signs give you the information. So we need the signs. But signals will give you the motivation. They'll give you the oomph to go. So let me just, let's just take a poll of the audience here. Okay, so we kind of know. Okay, red light means? Good, you passed driver's ed too. Okay, green light means? And yellow light means? All right, all right, don't you lie. Who said go faster? Sinners. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Okay. We all, see, we can miss signals like crazy. We miss signals like crazy, but so many of us are like, God, give me a sign, and God, give me a signal. And listen, I'm here to tell you, God has given you a sign, and his name is Jesus. Okay? So check this out. A sign without signals and you get stuck, okay? You're just stuck on red. You wouldn't have all the signs in the world that give you all the information you need, to, you need to know. But if the signal's stuck on red, you're not going anywhere. If you have signals but no sign, now you're lost. You're wandering around. You wonder how people get into weird theology. They have a lot of signals but no signs. Ooh, okay, I'm not gonna stand over there anymore. It's uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> See, but the angels, they were really clear about the signs, right? They, they gave like the what, the where, the when, the how. They told these shepherds straight up, listen, you're going to go to this city. Or let me just back up a second. They gave all the information they needed. They said, in this city, the Messiah has been born. This is the city you need to go to. It happened today. And this is how you'll know it's him. 
Like, wouldn't that be great if, like, everything you needed God's direction on would just happen because an angel just showed up and was like, all right, so here's what you're going to do. What you're going to want to do is go up here, and you're going to turn left, and you're going to turn right, and all the Like, that would be great. And so the angel spells this out. But notice in the text, the angel does not tell them to go. The angel gave the information. It was on the shepherds to take that information and do something with it. See, so often we're receiving all of this information, but we're not doing anything about it. So often what we do is we're getting all of these signs. We're getting all of this information about Jesus, but we're not following the signals. And listen, God has always got it on green, man. Just like go, just like move your feet. So many of us are waiting on a sign or a signal, and God has given you the sign, and the signal is go and follow Jesus. There's signs and there's signals. It's so clear to us. What do we do? What do we do? So the angels give this. Now the shepherds had to decide, like, do we believe this enough to act? And that's what we're going to talk about next week. So if you're here, I'm so blessed. I'll be here again next week. But we're going to talk a little bit about what the shepherds did with that and what we do with that. But belief without action is just dead. Like, like belief without action. Or, or I should say this. Uh, information, information without application is just useless. Information without application is just useless. And I shared this in the last service. I wasn't planning on it, but I'll give it to you again because it's a gift to you. But, but like, if you have a lot of information about somebody, but like you don't know them personally, you're a stalker. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if you know this, but stalkers are, are bad. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not up on all the trends, but I do know stalking, bad. But so many people, they have all this information about Jesus, and you're stalking Jesus, but you don't really know him. You've got all this information about Jesus, but you have no motivation to follow after him when he says, come, follow me, be with me. The light is green, go. You're stalking Jesus, and frankly, you're creeping him out, so stop it. (laughs) You can know all the Bible verses. You can recite John 3, 16 backwards in six different languages. That will not matter. What will matter is who do you say that I am? And will you follow me when I call you? Signs and signals. Signs and signals. So you might be saying like, wow, how in the world do I find Jesus? I'm so glad you asked that question in the back. That's a great question. Thank you so much. So good. How do I find Jesus? Like, what do I do? You have to come into a place of recognition. Who is Jesus and who am I? Now, what do I do with that information? Like, okay, maybe up to this point you're starting to see like, okay, I see Jesus was born and I think I can accept the fact that that he died and God raised him from the dead. That's great. That's the gospel, right? That's the good news that the angel was talking about. There is hope for you today. Listen, what you do is you recognize who Jesus is and who you are. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You confess that with your mouth. There is a verbal point of application to this thing and you will be saved. In fact, Paul in Romans says, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Why is that? Because when we call on the Lord, we're externalizing the fact that we cannot save ourselves from our sin. When we call on the Lord, we're saying, I can't help myself out of my sin situation. God, I need you to step in. God, I need you to work on my behalf. God, I need you to change this situation. In my hands, I will wreck this and I will ruin this. But God, in your hands, there's life. So that's how you follow Jesus. So, okay, I won't be silent, and here's why. I won't be silent because Jesus deserves my best praise. Oh boy, here we go. Jesus deserves my best praise. All right, so just kind of picture this in the 8K ultra high definition screen in your heart for a moment. You're the shepherd. You and your other shepherds, you're just kicking it in the field. This is how you make your living. Just hanging out, doing what shepherds do. Hanging out with all these sheep and sheep smell. That's why they say, ew. (laughs) Yeah, that one didn't work in the first service either. (laughs) But you know what? Being a shepherd, it's not that bad. (laughs) Oh, come on, somebody. I'm telling you, Johnny, get ready. Dad jokes coming your way, bro. Dad jokes. There's a joke in there about flocks, but I won't go there. But like... Wow, I got weird. Okay. (laughs) So play this out in your brain. Let me get back on track. Play this out in your brain. You're you're, you're there in the field with your shepherds, and you're doing your shepherd thing, and then all of a sudden there's an angel that appears, and it's blinding. You ever been in, in bed in a dark room, and then somebody flips the light on when you're not expecting it? It's like, ah, you can see your future. You're just, ah, it's just like, 
It just blinds you. Now just imagine that's the radiant glory of God shining. Okay, it's that moment, times like I don't know how many. It's just got to be crazy. But they're in that moment, they're blinded by this light, and they hear this angel giving them this information, this good news, and you need this good news. And you realize they're talking about the Messiah and like how incredible this is. But then in that moment, that angel who was alone is now immediately and suddenly, and we're going to talk about this more next week, about the immediacy of the scripture. Suddenly, in that moment, that angel is not alone. He's joined in verse 13. Check this out in verse 13. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Suddenly. There you go. That was good. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. So that one angel turned into many, 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 many angels and appeared with a great company of the heavenly host, appearing with them, praising God. They were speaking out loud and they were saying and they were singing this glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. In that moment, a heavenly worship chorus broke out across the skies where one angel angel turned into many. And can I just submit to you that that song of the angels is still going on today. And we have the choice to give Jesus our best praise by joining in that worship chorus, that everything that was before is not the same. This will literally change the way that we measure time because this baby has been born to you this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And they sing glory to God in the highest. And they're calling out to the Lord and they're worshiping the Lord. How do they react to Jesus. They react to Jesus with worship and with praise. It's a natural response by us as followers of Jesus to react to Jesus with our best praise. So you probably, you probably walk in the house this morning and you're like, if you're kind of newish, you're like, what is happening in here? People are singing loud. They're raising their hands. Why are we doing this? We're just continuing in that first worship chorus that began that night that Jesus was. We're just carrying that on. Why? Because Jesus deserves my best praise. Jesus doesn't deserve my leftovers. Jesus doesn't deserve when I have time for you at some point. Jesus doesn't even just deserve the less than 1% of your week that you'll actually spend in church if you attend church once a week. Jesus deserves my best praise. So check this out. Here's what they're singing. These angel armies bursting out of the sky, they're not there to destroy anyone. They're there with a message of peace, good news of peace that I bring to you. And man, if there's a message that we can carry to this world right now, especially with the economy being what it is, the wars that are going on, the rumors of the wars that are going on, is we say we serve the Prince of Peace, who is our peace that breaks down every single wall of hostility, as Paul talks about. This is our Prince of Peace. So check this out. God now in this moment is reconciling. Man, this was God's plan. In fact, Paul would later say this was the mystery of God that was concealed for ages but has been revealed in Christ. God's mystery is this, that he has sent his son to us, for us, to save us and deliver us for his glory and for our good. All right, all right, all right, all right. Check this out. Psalm 103, the psalmist, King David, Jesus coming from the lineage of King David. Check this out. In Psalm 103, verses 19 through 22, it says this. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Somebody give me an amen on that. Come on, somebody. Like, isn't this oddly similar to the message the angel gave Mary? When Mary is going about her business and the angel of the Lord appears and says, listen, don't be afraid, but you are going to become pregnant with the child of God. Like, this is an amazing news. It's a great story. But this is so telling because in that moment, the angel says this, that your child will sit on the throne of his father, David, and of his kingdom, there would be no end. There is no end to the kingdom of Jesus because our king is alive. He is still ruling. He is still reigning in this moment, in this place, in your life. All right, so check it out. Verse 20 in this psalm. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Are you seeing this theme? It's like, let everything, let everyone, let every spiritual being, let every angel in the sky above, let them call out the glory of God. And that's what's happening in this Christmas story in Luke chapter 2. I really think Luke chapter 2 connects so well to Psalm 103 
three is that this is a moment when all of the sky breaks out in this heavenly worship course and everything and everyone and everywhere is declaring the glory of God. Praise the Lord, all the heavenly hosts, you whose servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. And then check this out. And praise the Lord, my soul. You see, how, you see how it went from all of the heavens to all the works and all his dominion everywhere to me. It's not just the gospel for you. It's not just the good news for the neighbor down at the end of your row. It's not just the good news for your neighbor who lives down the street. This is the good news of God that is everywhere. In fact, that's what the angel says. It says, born to you this day in the city of David is a Savior who's Christ the Lord. But the ramifications are not just for you. It's for the whole world. It's for all of time in history. Our God is so incredibly personal that yes, God is infinite and above and greater than and the whole universe is filled with his glory, but yet he's so personal that unto you this day has been born a Savior. So praise the Lord, O my soul. I can't keep silent. I've got to give him my best praise. And so that takes me to this thought that the greatest oxymoron that could possibly exist is a silent Christian. Oh, we've we've laughed and joked about good cats and there's no such thing and all that. We've covered that ground. But the greatest oxymoron of all time should never exist is the silent Christian. It's often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel, and if you must, use words. Like, that is the worst thing I've ever heard. Like, preaching the gospel, and if you must use words, and I understand the thought, is like, listen, do a lot of great things for the kingdom. And I love that. I love doing a lot of good things in the name of the Lord. But if I do a lot of good things, if I host a lot of bake sales, if I do a lot of good car washes, if I mow my neighbor's lawn, but in that, at some point, I don't connect the fact that my God has loved me and saved me and set me free, and therefore, I want to do this for you because God loves you, God is for you, God has given Jesus to you. Like, you must use words. You have to use words words to declare the glory of God. We cannot stay silent. Don't let this oxymoron of a silent Christian exist. There was no silent night then. There should not be a silent Christian now. We must sing out our praise to God. But before we do that, we have to receive God's gift. We have to receive the gift that we have in Jesus because see, here's the reality. A king can give you a pardon for a crime. A, a, a president, a president can help negotiate a treaty to bring about an end to a war. A Congress may negotiate plans to, to help the economy, and all of those things are temporary, and they all won't last, but, but all of those things are powerless to give you what I need, and what you need most of all is we need peace in our soul between us and God, that while I was lost in my sin, he came and he found me, and he gave his life for me. And so the gift of Jesus that's available to us this morning goes like this. That oftentimes, uh, you know, we we see the plays and they're all good and everything where there's a a manger made of wood. But more often than not, a manger would have been made of stone. It would have been a carved hewn stone that would have been in somebody's house where they kept their animals and their family would have all lived kind of in that general area. And, And so if you think about it this way, just go with me on this, that Jesus, when he appeared, he was wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger. He he was wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger of stone. Now, this is the creativity of God in his story because Luke in his gospel is very, very direct about this. He's very clear about this. And oftentimes we miss this, is that when Jesus was born, he was wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger. Listen, Jesus was born for you. That's the gift of God. Jesus was born for you. But not just that, Luke goes to these lengths to connect the birth story to the death story of Jesus, to the beginning of his earthly life, to the end of his earthly life, before the resurrection. And you have to know this, it's very, very clear in the text that Jesus was wrapped in cloth and laid in a tomb. Jesus died for you. The birth narrative and the death narrative wrapped together in the same kind of wording that Jesus was wrapped in cloth and laid in a stone at the beginning in a manger, at the end in a tomb. Jesus has been gift wrapped for you. This is why we celebrate Christmas. This is why we can't stay silent. 
It's because of the goodness of our God. Would you stand with me this morning as we get ready to pray? On that note, Jesus rose from the dead. Praise God. And because of that, he was wrapped in glory. And he's here right now. Jesus gives peace to you. There might be areas of your life where you don't have any peace. And and really you can't, as the old saying knows, you can't know peace until you know the Lord. And this is an incredible, incredible opportunity for that, for you to get to know the Lord. Maybe for whatever reason in your life, you've never had this opportunity. Maybe you just kind of wandered in. You were driving by and like, what's all these cars doing here? I'll go check that out. Listen, you're not here by accident. You're not listening to this by accident. You're not watching online on accident. You are here right now listening to this as a divine sign and signal from the Lord that he's here to get your attention, that he is here for you and he brings you peace. But you must know that peace in your soul first. And we know that peace when we confess Jesus as our Savior. That Jesus step into my life and do for me what I can't do for myself. Especially at this Christmas. At this Christmas where he was wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger. Wrapped in cloth and laid in a tomb. But he is now wrapped in glory and he's here and he is your bringer of peace. And so I think we should just take a moment and respond to God. Just respond to the Lord out of his loving kindness. So across the house, even online, wherever you are, just bow your head and close your eyes with me because what we're going to do is we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to, to just take a moment and search our hearts, to search us and to know us, as the psalmist said, to know if there's any wicked way in us that God can correct, that God can fix. And I believe that he's here to do that for you. So across the house and even online with every head bowed and every eye closed and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to search our hearts, you need peace with God today. Either you don't have a friendship with God or for whatever reason you walked away from the Lord, but today you're walking back and you say, Pastor P, I want to make a decision for Jesus today. I need peace in my soul that I can't get from this world. I must receive it from Jesus. If that's you, just shoot a hand up really quick. I just want to pray with you. Yeah. Yeah. Church, let's just pray this together. Jesus, you were wrapped for me as a gift. So today, I freely receive your gift of salvation. And with that comes joy and peace and your life. I confess my need for you to save me, to heal me, and to help me. Thank you, Jesus for loving me and getting my attention today for this moment. Amen. Amen. Can we just give God a hand? Lord, we love you. We praise your name. How amazing you are, God, that you come to find us. I'm going to invite invite a couple of things. Number one, if you just raise your hand or you'd like to talk with me on Main Street, catch me on Main Street or you text Jesus to this number on the screen. But the reality is, is there's even as a follower of Jesus, there are times where we feel like God has been silent, so we've been silent with God. Believer, I'm gonna ask you to repent of that. And today, right now, where you are, speak to God. Maybe for the first time in a while, because maybe you're just like, I'm, I just, I'm frustrated. He's been quiet. I've been, I've been keeping him on quiet too. I've silenced him. If that's the case, change that. God is doing so much here at Arise Church and we want you to be a part of it. Stay connected with us on our YouTube channel, Facebook and Instagram and wherever you can find us online at My Arise Church and we'll see you next week.